Don't be the only one left in the dark. Hey guys, it's Jara with Wicked Prepared. Today I want to talk about a void we've had in our preps for a while now, and maybe you've been in a similar situation. We really didn't focus much on it. There was too much to think about, too many options, and it was just too expensive. But if you've watched any of my recent videos, and if you haven't, you should go check those out right after you finish this one. I've shown you the progress that we've made in filling this gap and really making sure that we're ready for whatever emergency may come our way. I'm talking about an emergency power supply. And for us, we're going solar. I'm gonna go over some of the features of the particular model that we have, specifications, pros and cons, and how it's been working for us. And be sure to stick around for the end of this video when I'll show you my two favorite features about this thing. They're pretty high tech, but super simple and easy to use. Now, if you're just here to see my review on this particular unit, feel free to skip ahead to this time right down here. But we've had a lot of viewers asking about how we do what we do and our reasoning behind some of the decisions that we make. So if you've got a few extra minutes, I'd love for you to stick with me so we can chat a little bit about the why and not just the what. Also, if you've decided to stay and hang out with me for a little bit, I'd love it if you'd consider hitting the subscribe button below and turning on the notifications. If you've watched our channel before, just know that we have had some of our regular viewers find out that YouTube had inadvertently unsubscribed them from our channel. So do me a favor and just check down below. If you see the word subscribe, just click on it and it will change to subscribed. If you're already subscribed to our channel, it will display the word subscribed already. And if you click the little bell next to that, it'll make sure that you get a notification in YouTube each time that we upload a new video, which lately has been once or twice a week. There's no fee for subscribing, no fine print, no strings attached. It's just YouTube's way of saying you're following our page. Also, while you're down there subscribing, don't forget to click the like button on this video. That really helps us out and we appreciate each and every one of those thumbs up. Now, like many people do, when we started to recognize the importance of emergency preparedness, we mainly focused on stocking up on food and water at first. I think a lot of folks, us included, felt like if we had a few jugs of water and a shelf full of non-perishables, we'd be all set. And while that's definitely a good start and certainly better than nothing, it's just not gonna sustain you through much more than a bad storm and a short-term power outage. So while we continue to add to our food and water supply, we've also added in options for harvesting and preserving our own food. And at the same time, we also started giving attention to stocking up on gear that we might need. Everything from flashlights and propane stoves to potassium iodide tablets and gas masks. Now, before I go any further, I wanna make sure that you realize We've been doing this for a long time. It didn't all just happen overnight. It's been a gradual process and a careful balance between preparing for the future while still living our best life day to day. We don't live very extravagantly and we certainly aren't rich, but we do our best to live within our means, to pay down our debt and to save money wherever we can. Even if we can save a few dollars here or there, that's extra money that we can put towards preparedness. So that's why in a lot of my videos, you'll see me stocking up on things that may not be necessary in an emergency, but they're helping us save money on our everyday grocery bill, which allows us to spend a little more on prepping for the future. Every little bit really does make a difference. Emergency preparedness is insurance. It's an investment and something that may seem like a hassle until the day you need it. And then you'll sure be glad you planned ahead. It's also never too late to start getting prepared, so if you haven't started already, now is the time to do it. But as I said earlier, one area that we have always shied away from was a backup source for electricity. I guess maybe part of it is from our experience with our yearly camping trip in Baxter State Park here in Maine. We kind of thought along those lines that if we can survive for a week in the woods without electricity, we'd definitely be fine in our own home. So we concentrated more on being able to cook with propane or fire, using battery powered items and pretty much making do without electricity altogether. But when we really stop and think about it, yes, we could certainly survive without electricity, but having it sure does make things a lot easier. Even something as simple as our grow lights for our seedlings in the spring. Sure, we could line our windowsills with plants, but they certainly do better with lights. Or for many, a CPAP machine or an oxygen concentrator, which are absolutely necessary to live or something like a sump pump in your basement, your water pump, your refrigerators and freezers, even just to charge your phone or your radios. Last year, Mr. Wicked Prepared got a wicked good deal on a generator that needed some work. He fixed it up and wired it into our home and it works great. It's even dual fuel so we can burn gasoline or propane. But unless you've got a stockpile of this fuel, which is difficult to do and could even be dangerous, your amount of backup power is definitely limited. 
But even aside from the fuel aspect, solar generators are just much more versatile over traditional fuel power generators. They're safer, they're quieter, they're more portable and less smelly. All very important in everyday life, but potentially life-saving during an emergency. With a solar power station, you can run it inside. You can run it in your car. You can even store it up high where it won't get damaged by flooding. You can even store it inside a Faraday cage to keep it safe from EMP attacks. Also, if you rent an apartment, especially one that's not equipped with a generator, you can keep this right inside so it'll always be there just in case. There are just endless advantages with a power station over a gas powered generator. There's no pulling on a rope to start it, no checking the oil, no having to remember the sequence to start it, no chance of it not starting. It's easy, it's fast, it's quiet, and it's clean. Now, solar power stations are not the be all and end all. They certainly have their disadvantages, like clouds. <laughs> but I've got to say, for us, the pros far outweigh the cons. And having this tool is another option, in addition to our gas power generator, is a great feeling. So, this unit here is the Blue Eddy EB3A 600 watt power station, and this is the PV120 120 watt solar panel. Now, keep in mind you can purchase these separately, and besides solar recharging, you can also recharge this power station by plugging it into the wall or your vehicle as well. But for our purposes, we definitely like using the solar panel. I'm sure there are specifications out there somewhere about how long it takes to charge, but I can tell you from firsthand experience that. We received the unit with a 70% charge. We hooked it up to the solar panel, set it up in the backyard with pretty full sun, and in just under an hour, it had a full charge. To me, that's pretty impressive. All right, so I'm just gonna open this up. This is the EB3A portable power station. It is a beautiful sunny fall day, so I think um, there's not a lot of clouds in the sky. I think this will be really good conditions for charging this up and seeing how this is gonna go. You can see this is the gray 120 volt AC unit. It's very nicely packaged. All right, so here we've got the cable and here is the unit itself. So let's see. Okay. It's not too terribly heavy. I was able to easily lift that out with one hand. Now this, of course, is a smaller unit. Um, Let's see, just the first glance, it's got a light. We've got a screen here. We've got all of our inputs and outputs. Now this is going to be the wall charger to be able to charge us up from the wall when you have power available. This is gonna go right into there. You can also get a car charging cable. Now we don't have that. I probably would like to get that. They're usually the least efficient way um, to charge it up but it is handy to have especially if you use this for camping or if you don't have a solar panel to charge it if you are without power and you still have gas in your car you can always charge it with your car all right so i'm going to go ahead and get this solar panel opened up it's nice and rigid and it has a nice handle for carrying it so that's really nice and then on the back of course this has a zipper pouch um, for the other end of the cord. It does have little um, clips to unclip to be able to open it up, so that's going to hold it really securely. And then, of course, it does have these adjustable um, sort of little easel stands. Just unbutton that and move it up to be able to put that out at more of an angle. And that's going to help you prop this up to charge wherever you need to. So let's get this opened up. All right, so this is a nice large solar panel. It's got four sections and it's a little bit, um, I think it's a little bit shorter and wider than the solar panels that we have. This is, I believe, a 120 watt solar panel. So I'm going to go ahead and get this propped up so we can get this charging. All right, so it's pretty simple to see. Um, there's two different types of connectors and they're going to go like that and just like that and then this is just going to go right into here and now this is the hard part is being able to film the screen now, of course I am standing right in front of these panels right now and blocking a lot of the sun from them I don't know why it looks like the screen is um, flashing on my screen on my phone because it's not. Looking at it, it's not um, 
doing that at all. I'm not sure why it looks that way on here. All right, so I did finally figure out this has pretty long cords, so I was able to move the unit back. Um, and so I'm sitting on the other side of the table from the panel, so I'm not blocking the panels. But we do have a little bit of cloud cover right now. You can see the watts going way up as the clouds start to move away a little bit and then down when they cover again. Now just like um, other units I've seen this does, the screen does shut off pretty quickly because that's going to obviously conserve a lot of the power. And if you can see this, it was charging at 90 watts, now it's down to, there's 87, 94. Uh, this is the sun um, going behind the clouds coming out. So of course on the left side it's showing us the input and then on the right side it's showing us the output because I am not, um, I have nothing plugged into this right now. Now we've got big cloud cover so you can see the watts have dropped and I believe this is the charging time so the charging time has uh, extended a little bit because I've got cloud cover right now. So this is pretty adaptable, this adjusts right um, in real time with the conditions. Now I definitely could adjust these panels and probably get a more efficient um, angle to the sun, but we don't have a lot of charge we have to put into this. Um, I'm just trying this out to see how it works. So I'm just going to leave it how it is for now. This is easiest for me. Now everybody always wants to know, including us, what can I plug into that thing and how long will it run? Of course, there are a lot of variables, but I did some research and I have some pretty interesting numbers to share with you. First off, this unit is the 600 watt model with a 1200 watt surge rating, and it's listed at 268 watt hours. It also produces a pure sine wave, which is an absolute must for sensitive electronics. As far as runtime, Blue Eddy supplies some estimates in their specifications, including a 5 watt light bulb running for 30 hours, a 20 watt fan for 11 hours, and a 60 watt mini fridge for 3.6 hours. But where a solar generator like this really shines is when you take into account its pass-through charging capability, meaning that you can use it to power something while it's charging. So as long as you have more power going in than you do going out, it would run indefinitely, or at least until the sun goes down. Just a few more specs to share with you. This unit weighs in at just 10 pounds. It's super portable. It's also got a lithium iron phosphate battery. And this battery has a natural advantage over traditional lithium ion cells due to its thermal and chemical stability, giving you a better performance, a longer life cycle, 2,500 cycles of up to 80% charging. This machine also has numerous safety features that prevent overheating, overcharging, and overloading. And Blue Eddy ships every one of these with an incredible 24 month warranty. And honestly, one thing that I really love about this unit is how sleek and just, you know, nice looking it is. And it doesn't have all of those garish bright colors that some other brands have. I really like this is just gray. It's just sort of, it's very nondescript, very discreet. And I really like that about this unit. So on this unit, these are the inputs right here. So this one is where you're going to plug in the solar panels or the um, car charging cable. And then this right here is where you're going to plug in to a wall outlet and it does come with the wall outlet cable you do have to purchase the um, vehicle cable separately if you want to use that for charging but honestly I definitely think that's worth it because you never know when you might not have power to charge this from your wall outlet but you might have um, gas or battery in your car and be able to get this charged up through your car especially if it's a you know during some sort of a storm where there's not a lot of sun for charging the panels otherwise. And then over here we've got um, the AC output. So this is just your reg regular wall outlets, typical wall outlets you um, plug into. So this is where you could plug in a cigarette um, outlet plug. And then we have a couple of these kind of plug-ins. I don't even know what these are called. If you know, let me know down in the comments. We've got two USB-A um, outlets and one USB-C outlet. Now the solar panel, like I said, you can purchase these items separately. You can purchase just the power station unit and you can purchase the solar panels separately. We wanted to get the solar panels for sure. That was something we really wanted to have because we wanted to have a renewal source of charging this up. If we didn't have electricity, if we didn't have any kind of fuel, if we ran out of fuel for our gas generator, we wanted to make sure that we had a way to get some power. Now the good thing about the Blue Eddy is that they do use MC4 connectors, which is pretty standard for solar power. So, so you could pretty much use any solar panel as long as it fit the specifications that are laid out in the manual, which is um, just right here. 
The thing is, though, we really find it just to be easier to go with the panels that are made for that particular unit. I did see someone showing off their um, setup that they had made for their portable power station, and they had gotten some cheap solar panels off of Amazon, and were showing how they set that all up. And honestly, like those panels, they were big. They were unwieldy. They weren't very portable, in my opinion. And it took some extra time to set them up. Whereas this panel, I literally just opened it up, plugged it in, and it was plug and play. It was absolutely ready to go. So to me, it's worth paying a little bit extra um, to get to get the ease and the portability of you know these units these these solar panels and these type of portable power stations but i've put a link to this particular unit down in the description box below and i'm also including a link to the blue eddy homepage where you'll find a bunch of different models and sizes of power stations solar panels all built with the same quality and ease of use as this eb3a right here Models range in size and output from small units like this one all the way up to 3,000 watt units that actually can be connected into a group of four to produce an incredible 12,000 watts. As far as I'm concerned, I feel like everybody could use a unit like this, even if it's just a small one to start out with. No matter where you live, you've got the potential to lose power. But as a prepper, I feel like this is necessary. It's also not just a piece of gear you'll buy and pack away in your closet and forget about it. You can use one of these if you go camping or tailgating. I've seen truck drivers using these in their trucks. Mr. Wicked Prepared has used ours on job sites, even just to play music or charge his cordless tools and around the house because a lot of times it's just easier than unwinding a huge extension cord. We've got a few more ideas in mind for this thing too, possibly a different method of charging it. And I've also got plans to use it in my vehicle to help me keep groceries cold on the long drive home from our bulk discount stores. We absolutely love this thing. And if you wanna see us putting it to use in future videos, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications. That way you won't miss out. Giving us a thumbs up also helps us out tremendously and helps more viewers like you find our channel. And one last thing, I wanted to reveal the surprising high-tech features that I love about this particular model. First of all, this unit has a built-in 15-watt wireless charger right here on top. So all you have to do is place any device that has wireless charging capabilities right on top and it'll charge right up. It's like magic. And to use that, you just push the power button to turn it on. And then you're going to have to push it another time to get the DC uh, power output turned on. Now right now you can see that we would be able to run this for about 21 and a half hours, I think that says, with this much power going out of it. And that's if we weren't putting more power into it because this does support pass-through charging. So we could be simultaneously recharging this with either the solar panels or the wall plug or any of those options while it's discharging at the same time. Now you can see after 30 seconds, um, the display does turn off. That's not the whole unit turning off, it's just the display and that's a battery saving feature. You just have to press the power button briefly to light the screen back up if you wanna see what's on the screen. But this does have a power saving mode and if you use that mode, then this unit will power down if it's drawing less than a certain amount of power. But if you're not using that mode, then this unit should not power down no, no matter how little power that you're drawing out of it. And second, you can actually hook this unit up to your phone via Bluetooth and the Blue Eddy app. This allows you to view all of the vitals of your power station and be able to power it on and off right from the palm of your hand. And you can basically control anything that you would be able to control on the physical device itself. Now, obviously, this probably wouldn't be very useful in a true long-term grid down emergency. You wouldn't be using your cell phone and an app to control your portable power station. But... For any other use that you might use this for, things like camping and tailgating, a lot of people use these on a job site. Um, any other use you could use this for, this is going to be a really handy feature and I just love it. That's wicked cool if you ask me. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, leave me an electric plug emoji like that one down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I'm Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.